you very much, uh, presiding judge and uh, the members of your court. I want to guarantee you from the outset that we will not use four and a half hours for the respondents. We will be <coughs> very, very succinct. Indeed, we may very well use half that time. Every lawyer in this court is entitled to his opinion as to what the law is. There is only one thing they are not entitled. It doesn't depend on their opinion. It is what the facts are. And that's where we need to start. What are the facts that are relevant to you determining whether conservatory orders should continue in force or should be vacated. It is my humble submission that the pertinent, the material facts are as follows. On the 17th of October 2024, the Speaker of the Senate gazetted the removal from office of the former Deputy President, the Honorable Daniel Ashoka, by dint of Article 157, sub Article 7. It is important for us to go there, my Lord, and it will take half a minute. What is the language of 145, sub Article 7? It is this. If at least two-thirds of all members of the Senate vote to uphold any impeachment charge, any, the President shall cease to hold office. That's the language. Shall cease to hold office. As at the day and the time and the minute that Senate voted, the Deputy President ceased to hold office. I, I, I hope this doesn't disappoint my learned friend Teresia Kemodo of Teresia Kemodo and Company. <laughs> Who wants an apology? <laughs> the deputy president ceased to hold office. But something else happened. An intervening fact is that on Friday, the 18th of October, via a special sitting of the National Assembly, the Honorable Professor Kindiki Kithure, pursuant to Article 149.1, having been nominated by His Excellency the President, <coughs> was confirmed by the National Assembly and voted on his nomination. One person has ceased to hold office, another person has been appointed, has been nominated, and the body entrusted in law in affirming that nomination did so. That was at 1.30 p.m. on Friday the 18th of October 2024. What then did the Honorable Judges of the High Court of Kenya conserve? What were they conserving? There was nothing to conserve. In the logic of the law, we've been told that to, uh, a lot about why the Constitution is very important, why it's very special, why it's very transformative, why it's not like the Constitution of Araka. It may very well be all that. But the Constitution is a law to interpret, to be interpreted the way we interpret all of. When we read a will, we don't start searching for the spirit of the will. Because the will is speaking. It is saying, I leave my assets to my son, to my daughter, to my uncle. So a person reading a will doesn't tell the family, before we read the will, let us capture the spirit of the will. If we 
read attendance say, agreement, we do not say, let us capture the spirit of the tenancy. The tenancy agreement is speaking on its face until there is an ambiguity, which is the same thing with the Constitution. It says what it says until there is an ambiguity. Where is the ambiguity when the Constitution has said, shall, shall cease to hold on? It is our first submission. There is no ambiguity. There is no reason to search for any other meaning, any other spirit, any other constructiveness. The honorable, the honorable, the petitioner is aware of that. There is an affidavit here called supplementary affidavit in support of the petition. What does it say in paragraph 22? In this case, however, Kifira Kindiki was unqualified because he had not been a member of UDA political party for three months preceding the nomination. He was ineligible for nomination to the elective position of deputy president under Article 37 on the 18th of October 20th, when the vacancy arose. This is not the Attorney General's affidavit. It is the petitioner's affidavit. So that his lawyer may be acting contrary to his express instruction because he has sworn an affidavit in which he acknowledges that that office became vacant. It is our second submission that when the so-called conservatory orders, and my colleagues will demonstrate that these are not conservatory orders, these were mandatory injunctive orders of a nature not contemplated by the Constitution in this circumstance. At 1.31 1, 1 p.m., when the conservatory orders both were issued, both in uh, Kirogoya and in Nairobi, there was nothing available to conserve. The substratum of their complaint had been overtaken by event. And so much so, my lord, that, uh, and my learned friend will take me through it, there are several judges who were approached to give conservatory orders, including this bench. And you say there are matters here already overtaken by event. That news may not have reached other parts of the country. Very briefly, I will ask you to have a few minutes. My Lord, this constitution is a constitution to protect everybody. Sometimes it is cited as if it was tailored only to protect a section of, of, of the society in Kenya. It is for everybody including the institutions that it, it, it establishes. It is to protect the judiciary. It is to protect the legislature. It is to protect the executive. We are told continuously that the, the executive is a problem. The executive is a problem. The executive is also protected by law. The president has a power donated by this constitution to nominate a deputy president. He did that. He has a power to send that name to court, uh, to parliament. He did that. Parliament has a power <coughs> to vote on that name. It did that. But it is being suggested <coughs> that that in itself finds no protection under the constitution. <coughs> what? finds protection in the Constitution is the conservatory order that came from uh, that, that came from Kirogoya. Kirogoya, yeah, yeah. So, a place called Kirogoya. <coughs> we were told, my lord, and this is true, that the impeachment process is a special process. It's sui generis. It is neither civil nor criminal. 
it, it's a process sui generis. And that is why, and this cannot be said many times, enough times, that is why the framers of the Constitution do not say that the Vice President will be brought to the Supreme Court of Kenya and tried for violations of the Constitution. It is a political process. It goes to a political chamber. Senate sits <coughs> as a political body. That's what happens in there. When Dr. Kaminwa says impeachments are never successful in the United States, it is because of the peculiar politics of the United States. Because the impeachment process, even there, is more political than it is here. So we have, we must have fidelity to law, by law, it is our submission. <coughs> if you read through the case of Guerrero Mbugi, it is in our bundle, and I will not, and if you read the case of uh, Martin Wambora, Guerrero Mbugi is instructive. This is what the court said, and I will be very brief. A court must satisfy itself that the case before it is not called <coughs> up by the bar of non-justiciability. The concept of non-justiciability is comprised of three doctrines. Firstly, the political question doctrine. Secondly, the constitutional avoidance doctrine. Thirdly, the rightness doctrine. Actually, much was said about justiciability. This is not new law. This is old law. It is thousands of years law. It's thousands of years of English law. The first thing the judge would ask is, what is your course of action? You must have a course of action. The court is not a forum where litigants can hold an academic debate. The judge will always ask, what is your course of action? Okay. Now, so the doctrine of justiciability may sound new, but it is as old as the common law. What is the political question doctrine? We are not going to argue it. But it is actually straightforward that the Constitution recognizes that it has donated power and authority to several institutions. And each institution should keep to its lane. We have developed a constitutional law, or we are developing a constitutional law here, that, law, that, actually, is in con that actually invites contravention of the Constitution. And it is this, that every conceivable social, political, cultural, economic grievance, grievance is capable of a constitutional resolution. How is that? How is that? It is not possible. And that is why in, in our political social system, we have a million other ways of resolving conflict. Not all conflict is justiciable. Not all grievances are amenable to a constitutional solution. Now, let me go to my second last point about uh, I want to take you to the case of the county government of Kisi and two others versus the Independent Electoral Commission. It is a 2024 decision. This is the last thing I'll say before I invite my colleagues to come in. The gracious lady will not have to bang her gong. This is what the court said in that part. While guided and applying the foregoing, in this case, the law does not anticipate that the office of the deputy governor shall remain vacant indefinitely for whatever reason, having so held that gazettement is a mere administrative formality and taking into consideration the circumstances of the instant case, whereby nomination and approval by the county assembly of PC was undertaken way back in April 2024, it would be unconstitutional to further delay and postpone indefinitely the filing, the filling of the vacancy of the office 
of the deputy governor of Kisi. That's what that court said. Finally, 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 because I'm still within time. The Wajia case shows that our constitution has self-correcting provisions. What happened there, my lord, will remember? Yes? Is that uh, the governor had been impeached. During his impeachment, another, the, the, the deputy governor, assumed the high office of governor. He went to court. After a long litigation, the court found his impeachment was wrong. And then the court said, reverse the order. Uh, just to use an expression by my learned friend, I think it was Mr. Kimberman. <coughs> the, law, the law is organized. The, the heavens didn't come down <coughs> in Wajir. The law said, Go back to your office, go back to your office, and the rest of you go home and do something else. That's, that is how to ensure certainty, predictability, stability. That is what we should have here. We are here, we, I am told on behalf of the Attorney General to assure you that for as long as this matter is litigated, uh, the, 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 the law will be observed. If a day comes when anything needs to be reversed, that will be reversed. But for now, the public interest is in continuity. Thank you. Yes, my Lord. Uh, the Honorable Chief of my Lord, let me dive right into.